Amen. Please be seated. Well, I got to tell you, we just got back yesterday from a week in Chicago. A number of us, we had a time in Chicago. Woo. Praise the Lord. We sent Brad sooner uh, than that, so he actually attended uh, classes to uh, be uh, approved as a facilitator for our Creating a Life That Matters program. And so I'm really excited to say he's uh, And I know you're going to be hearing more from him in the not too distant future about when we're going to offer that again because it's a, an amazing, transforming, life changing uh, thing to take part in. And, uh, uh, well, geez, it was just, you know. It was just a conference. It was a wow all the way around. Um, yesterday morning, uh, the members of the new governing board, which include our own Gail Rissler. <laughs> and members of the old governing board, which included me and Brian Parker going off, as well as Liz Sorty going off. Praise God. <laughs> uh, we all met together to talk about what the conference meant to us. And uh, it was, uh, there was, there was a spirit of trust, you know. Uh, sometimes when structures in uh, churches or denominations change, there's a little bit of anxiety about what all that means. There was a level of trust in the business meeting that was profound and just incredibly wonderful. And there was a spirit in worship. You know, that was just also incredible. And we had different kinds, different forms of worship experience. You know, all the way from like blow out uh, gospel uh, to a service that included times for silence and for meditation. And every single one of them was authentic, was authentic, and was deep in its meaning. So worship was a wow all week long. It was just an incredible, incredible time. And something happened, but I am, two couple things happened yesterday, again, as we were gathering, one of the things that I said to the uh, governors and the senior leadership team, the council of elders that was present with us, I said, I feel like a, a proud grandma in so many ways. Um, so, because I will admit uh, that the core of the conference choir was the gospel choir from MCC Washington. So I felt a little bit like a proud grandma with that going on. And so many in uh, churches around uh, the denomination uh, came out of MCC Washington. And so I, I'm sorry, but I had to kind of go back and grab some of that and go, oh, <laughs> I felt old. <laughs> That's what I really felt. I felt like I've been around for a long time. The scripture that was read for you this morning uh, actually is a... Instruction from Jesus to not just his disciples, those 12 that we consider to be the disciples, but you'll note that what he does is he sends out in the, in the uh, uh, ancient manuscripts are about evenly split. He sends out either 70 or 72, we're not sure which, uh, people out to the villages that he is going to be coming to. So he sends out this sort of advanced team to prepare the way in the villages for him to come. So they are his advance teams. And he sends them out by twos. Number one, why does he send 70 or 72? The ancient manuscripts in Genesis chapter 10 actually list all of the world's nations. And in some manuscripts there are 70 listed. In some manuscripts there are 72. So, also, not sure. Now, nowadays, there are over 200 plus, I think, nations. And every time you turn around, it seems like there's a new one being created. Praise the Lord. It's just, you know, uh, there's an awful lot of subdivision going on. But uh, the list in Genesis was meant, was really meant to encompass all the world. And so when Jesus sends out 70, someone would immediately in their mind go, oh, he's sending out folks into the whole world. Not just to the villages that he is about to enter, but really in a way sending these folks out all over 
the world. And it says they were sent out two by two. Now that is not a reference to Noah's Ark. <laughs> it is, however, helpful to know that in the Mosaic Law and in Roman Law as well, you had to have at least two witnesses to testify to the truth of something. And so they were sent out two by two, probably to also be companions for one another on the journey, because it is good for that to be the case, but also so that they could testify to the truth of who Jesus was, so that when he came into a village, or into a town, or into a city, those two had already prepared the way for him, and then they would be ready to receive, hopefully, the good news. But Jesus also made a little bit of provision. Did you hear what he said? He said, I hope that you'll be received, and there are certain things you need to do when you get there. You know, eat with whoever opens their door to you, etc., etc. But if they do not receive you, if they will not receive the good news that I embody, Jesus says, shake the dust of that town off your feet, and it will be for them as it was for the city of Sodom. Now, you remember that city? Who remembers that one, right? Isn't it interesting that it's those who do not receive the good news of the love of God made real through Jesus Christ? It is those who do not receive that good news that are considered as if they are Sodom. So it ain't us, y'all. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> it's not us to, to paraphrase someone from Georgia. <laughs> One of the things. Write that down. <laughs> One of the things that uh, was real clear to me over this last week as we watched people from really all over the world gather. One of the things that became real clear to me is that our work is not done yet. Our work is not done yet. A number of years ago, uh, one of the ministries in our denomination <coughs> decided to put together a, a program where congregations could become transformative in their ministry. And word about this program went out to all the churches. I don't know how many that is. Uh, 200 and some. Yeah, I don't know. What. Well, at this particular general conference, the transformative ministry of the denomination gave only five certificates for completion of part of the transformative ministry project. We were the first ones named, weren't we, Reverend Jay? to ensuring the full inclusion of trans and gender non-conforming people in all aspects of its ministry. And I was so proud when whoever Jake went up to receive it. Because it really was all of us that made that possible. By our learning to reach out beyond, by our really, I think, listening to Jesus. Listening to Jesus who said, everyone deserves God's love. Everyone deserves God's love. No one, no one is outside of the kingdom of God. How do we articulate our mission today? You know, some people, folks say, oh, well, you know, there are other churches. Have you heard this? There are other churches that are now welcoming of GLBT people. <clears throat> you know? Some of you know who they are. There are some. You know, even here in, even here in St. Petersburg and Clearwater. <laughs> Can you imagine? There are churches who are welcoming of GLBT people. So some people think our mission is done. 
is growing the fastest? Can you even imagine where it might be? Those of you that don't want to speak now. Can you guess where it's growing the fastest? It's not growing fastest in Africa, although it's growing there. We're growing there. And specifically in Brazil. Would you believe? Brazil. We have a ministry which we call uh, the ministry in Ibero-America. You know the Iberian Peninsula, remember that from growing up in geography, which includes Spain and Portugal? Well, Ibero-America includes those parts of this, this hemisphere and the southern hemisphere, the northern and some, the southern hemisphere, that speak Spanish and Portuguese. And we are growing faster in Brazil than in anywhere else in the world. Wow. And why? Because there is a hunger on the part of GLBT people in that part of the world to, to know that there is a place where they can be affirmed, where they can be loved, where there can be a community of people that loves one another. And they're not getting that from the Pentecostals or the Roman Catholics <laughs> in Brazil. I would suggest that we still have work to do in our own backyard. You know, it's not just work to do in Africa. It's not just work to do in Brazil or Mexico or in other places. We have work to do in our own backyard. There are still people who don't know the simple, simple message. God loves you just the way you are. Amen. And some people say, you know, you've been preaching that for so long, we're getting tired of hearing it. Well, let me tell you, if that's where you're living, it means that you need to share that message with somebody who hasn't gotten it yet. It's not an old, tired message, because it's a message not just for gay people, not just for lesbians, not just for trans folk. It's not just for bi folk. It's also for everybody else. Those folks we call straight? <laughs> Heterosexual? Because there are some folks out there that are struggling with the circumstances in their life and they do not believe God loves them. My brothers and sisters, that's a word we've got down pat. We've got it. It took us a while to get it, didn't it? For some of us, it took a longer time than others. Some of you still don't quite have it. But we're going to keep preaching it until you get it. Number one. But we also know it needs to move outside of ourselves. And we need to be more open to the whole world, not just to the trans community, as important as that is. And I want to tell you, just because we've got a certificate doesn't mean our work is done. Amen. Okay? Amen. Great to have a certificate, but it doesn't mean our work in this area is done. I want to show you something. Is that true? This is the front page of our new website. Now I asked, I said, well, do you have the first picture of the company? Because the first picture that pops up when you first come to the new website actually has a, a picture of a whole bunch of people up here. You know, I like that. You know, very rainbowy. You know, that looks so different. It's really great. There's about five pictures, I think, that scroll. We're not ashamed of who we are. Right up there in the corner. Our denominational symbol, MCC, King of Peace Metropolitan Community Church. We are not ashamed of the denomination of which we are a part. I want to say that loud and clear. But our website now says www.churchstpetersburg.org. Why did we make that decision? So people say, well, you know, shouldn't it say King of Peace MCC dot org? You know, you'll only get to that if you know the name of our church. You know, there are not a lot of people that know the name of our church. We know the name of our church. It's very interesting on our name tags at General Conference. 
they had the names of the churches. And I can't tell you how many people came up to me and said, so where is King Peace? And where are you located? I had to do that for some other folks, too, from their churches. Because it didn't say MCC Detroit. It said something else. Or it didn't say, there's a church in, in uh, Chicago. It's called A Church for Me, MCC. Well, I wouldn't have any clue where that was. Just by the name of the church. <coughs> And just by saying King of Peace MCC, we don't know where it's located. But if you say Church St. Petersburg, you know what that does when you Google, hopefully, the church? Say, when you're looking for a church in St. Petersburg, I don't care who you are. If you're looking for a church in St. Petersburg, again, I don't care who you are. If you're looking for a church in St. Petersburg, we want you here. We want you here. The name of our website. It's pretty simple. Pretty simple. And pretty much all of the other information that we have on the old website is available on the new one, except this one's really pretty. <laughs> How do we articulate our mission today? I don't think it has changed all that much from what it was 45 years ago. There are still people who need a place to come to worship, to worship God authentically who they are. Not trying to hide a part of their selves. Not trying to be somebody that God did not create you to be. But just to simply be authentically who you are. There is still a place at MCC. There are still churches that need to give that message. But it's more than that. We need to reach beyond ourselves. To touch the lives of others. See, you see, the other thing that MCC is, besides a place just to feel good about ourselves, we are a justice church. Because sometimes I think we forget that. You know, we're all happy with the stuff that other people do in other places, you know, about justice stuff. But it's really important for us to be involved in that, too. Oh, it's not just for somebody else. It's for all of us. You know, one of the things that Jesus talked a lot about was the poor and the hungry. Now, he didn't say, I came to minister to the rich and the powerful. Now, I didn't come so you could be comfortable. I came to preach good news to the poor, recovery of sight to the blind, release to the captives. I came to preach that it is the acceptable year of war. Those are fighting words. They're not comfort words. They're fighting words. They're justice words. And we do some of that in Peace MCC. I'm so proud of our human outreach team. Aren't you? Yeah. I'm proud of our outreach team. They feed the hungry on a regular basis and the homeless on a regular basis. And they do more than that, too. They collect clothing. They collect every month. There's something new. Toothpaste, toothbrushes. What is it this month, Steve? Paper towels. Paper towels. You know, sometimes it's oil paper. <clears throat> sometimes it's feminine products. <laughs> you know, homeless women need that stuff, too. <laughs> Just a reminder. <laughs> I'm beyond it myself. <laughs> it's all right, he's still young. still a justice 
church. Rick Warren, who wrote uh, The Purpose Driven Life, many of you are familiar with his work. Yeah. He said this one time, if your neighbor had cancer or AIDS, and you knew the cure, it would be criminal to withhold that life-saving information. <coughs> Even worse would be to keep secret the way to forgiveness, purpose, peace, and eternal life. We have the greatest news in the world, he says, and sharing it is the greatest kindness you can show to anyone. We have the greatest, greatest news in the world, and that news is Jesus. It's Jesus. And it's how he taught us to reach beyond ourselves to touch the lives of others. King of Peace, Church St. Petersburg. We still have a lot of work to do. There are still empty, empty places in the pews. There are still empty places in the pews. And we still only have one worship service on Sunday. Did you hear me? <laughs> Sometime soon, y'all are going to have to make a decision about which Sunday service you're going to attend. Would you be willing to do that? Yeah. Let me tell you why that's important. It's important for you to make that decision because I know, my God, it's going to be hard not to see your friends every week. You know, get your friends to go to the service you want to go to. It's going to be hard. But if we have, but if we have two services, we can have more children. We can have more people. We can reach out further with the good news of the love of God in Jesus Christ. So my friends, we still have work to do. We still have work to do. I want to end with this thought. The work that we have to do should be the source of our joy. It should be the thing that makes our heart sing. The work that we have to do should not be a burden that we somehow have to carry. But it should give our hearts a lightness to be doing the work of God, to be sharing the love of Jesus. It should give our heart joy. You know, I've been in this denomination now for over 30 years. I've been clergy for 30 years this year. I've been clergy. You know, and I've seen people leave our denomination through the years. It's almost like they get tired or something. I'm not quite sure why because I can't reach into their spirits and know exactly what's going on with them. But i got to tell you, I'm still excited about MCC. <laughs> I'm still excited about the work that we've done and I'm excited about what God still has in store for us. Because God's not done with us yet. I'm very excited that over the, I'm going to jump the gun a little bit on this probably because it's not been announced uh, all over the place, but uh, I'm not off the governing board, I think that's been well announced, <laughs> uh, no longer on the governing board, but I know how Reverend Elder Nancy Wilson thinks. She's going to actually preach for you in a couple of weeks. <laughs> I'm excited about that too. The three of us who are going off the governing board have all been given additional responsibilities. <laughs> Two of them are going to be leaders of network leaders, and that, that's a long, complicated thing. You don't necessarily need to be aware of. We're part of a network of churches, you know, so beyond ourselves we can be connected to others, and then beyond that we're connected to the denomination. And so two of the people that have gone off the governing board are doing that work. And I can't tell you how excited I am to be spending at least the next three, if not more, years working with someone probably from outside of the U.S. and pulling together a team of people to rewrite MCC's statement of faith. Rewrite it. Because we have outgrown what we have as our statement of faith. We are more progressive than our statement of faith. And it's going to be an awful lot of fun I'm going to get a t-shirt that has a target on its back. <laughs> because it's going to be an awful lot of fun. 
to hear from the denomination, who are we? Who are we? And who does God want us to become? What do we believe about God? Because what we believe about God, what we believe about Jesus, what we believe about the Holy Spirit, what we believe about one another, will form our mission in the world. It will form our mission in the world. I'm still not done. I'm still joyful to get up in the morning. It is a joy to minister to you, and it is a joy to be in this denomination. I want to share in closing a poem, a piece that uh, Kathy Galloway, who was part of the Iona community, wrote in 1992. It's entitled, entitled Bless Us. Bless Us. So I want you to close your eyes and pray this as we pray. Our brother Jesus, you set our feet upon the way, and sometimes where you lead, we do not like or understand. Bless us with courage where the way is fraught with dread or danger. Bless us with graceful meetings where the way is long. Bless us with good companions where the way demands a common cause. Bless us with night vision where we travel in the dark, keen hearing where we have not sight, to hear the reassuring sounds of fellow travelers. Bless us with humor. We cannot travel lightly, weighed down with gravity. Bless us with humility to learn from those around us. Bless us with decisiveness where we must move with speed. Bless us with lazy moments to stretch and rest and savor. Bless us with love given and received. And bless us with your presence, even when we know it in your absence. Lead us into exile until we find on that road, on the road is where you are. And where you are is going home. Bless us. Lead us. Love us. Bring us home. Bear the gospel of life. In Jesus' name, amen.